2 p.m. on Monday, former Nixon White House counsel and key Watergate witness John Dean, some of you remember his name, some of you need to Google him, testifies before the House Judiciary Committee Monday. Politico reports some Democrats think his mere presence will increase support for President Trump's impeachment. Here he is talking about a possible Trump impeachment in light of Nixon's behavior. The Article 3 against Richard Nixon was really based on his behavior after they started the impeachment proceeding because he refused to cooperate. He refused mm. to supply his tapes. Uh, he, didn't, he couldn't prevent all the witnesses. And here is John Dean nearly 46 years ago testifying against then-president and his former boss, Richard Nixon. I began by telling the president that there was a cancer growing on the presidency, and if the cancer was not removed, the president himself would be killed by it. All right, here to discuss, former Deputy Assistant Attorney General, good friend of the show, Bob Driscoll. Appreciate it, as always, for you to be here. Boy, if this is the Democrats' first witness in an impeachment proceeding, I don't get it. Do you? Uh, I'm baffled. It, it has nothing to do with Trump. Um, it's ancient history. Most voters uh, need to break open the history books to know about it. I mean, I, I'm a 50-year-old man. I was, I think, five when he testified. Um, and, and on top of that, he's a disbarred attorney who himself was convicted of obstruction and destruction of evidence in the Watergate case. So I'm, I'm not positive why we should be right, listening so, so, to his so, legal views. All right, so if, if, you, if you think about the logic as it goes, uh, there are Democrats who want to impeach President Trump. Right. Nothing says impeachment like Watergate. Nothing says Watergate like John Dean, among those right. who are, are living. Let's call John Dean. What can he testify to? What, what Nixon did? He... Uh, I mean, I, th I think what he'll try to do is he'll try to uh, compare seriousness of crimes and undertake other analysis, which, frankly, he's probably among the least qualified people to do as a disbarred attorney. He's not a, a law professor or a scholar. He's simply a historical figure. So yeah. I, I think it's, it's one of those things where I think it's very typical in a media age where you, they want to get Watergate and Trump in the same sentence. And, and and the verb is irrelevant, so, you know. So 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 they'll, they'll you know somehow you know is Watergate blah, 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 Trump, and, you know, and, 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 and by the way, and John Dean is blah, 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 blah. so no worthy, so, no worthy they succeeded because we're right. we're sitting here talking exactly. about it. And, and as you point out, Dean is is shall we say controversial? That may be generous right. of adjective among Nixon alum. Here's a FoxNews.com op-ed worth reading if you are going to watch the testimony. We're going to go ahead and put it up. It's a lot Live on FoxNews.com. John Dean, convicted felon, as you mentioned, sentenced to a prison term of one to four years, disbarred from the practice of law for the past 45 years, but he remains a media hero, the toast of the liberal Eastern establishment, because he changed his story of what had happened to save himself and to sink his former colleagues. Fact is, the ugly truth about John Dean is far different than what the American people have been led to believe. In any hearing, you've got the Democrats who get to question him, and he can pontificate, as you mentioned. But he's going to have to answer for all of these things to the Republicans, who are certainly going to question him about his right. history. They will. I, I think what the Democrats will do is try to make it seem that any uh, and bring up his past is somehow defending Richard Nixon um, is the, the, what they'll try to point to the Republicans. But I still just don't. I, I don't see the connection. I don't see how this how this is what would get traction in today's day and age uh, it, it about him, this. It, it, undoubtedly, though, John Dean's testimony was damning to Richard Nixon. He was, this was the, the watershed right. moment in the hearings that were watched by, at times, 70 percent of Americans right. that really changed the tide. It brings up sort of the implicit question. John Dean was the White House counsel who right. did testify. Mm -hmm. Don McGahn is the White House counsel who yep. so far is not testifying. Right. Well, I, I don't think the comparison goes that far, because I think, you know, Don McGahn cooperated under oath from the beginning. I mean, some lawyers, myself included, would question whether it was a wise idea to have your lawyer testify to the special counsel. But he did. He, there's no argument that he didn't testify truthfully. He hasn't obstructed justice. He hasn't destroyed documents. So, I mean, I think if I were Don McGahn, I would say I have nothing to do with John Dean. I told the truth. Half the negative information about Trump from the Mueller report is out of the mouth of Don McGahn. Um, but that cuts both ways. It, it shows transparency in addition to being, you know, uh, awkward for the president at times for some of his actions. Awkward, perhaps, 
proof of either criminality or Mueller did not think that was enough right. to charge him with, yep. uh, and then proof of an impeachable offense, that's up to Congress. Right. Does Don McGahn at some point get forced to testify whether he's given immunity or whether he is allowed to testify by the President Trump or he doesn't get right. an option? I think it's a lot closer call than a lot of legal pundits say. I do think the White House has a pretty good argument that they can hold him back. Um, I know that they've let him testify as special counsel, but I don't think you necessarily, the argument will be, waive executive privilege by letting him testify to someone else in the executive branch. Um, mm -hmm. And so, uh, you know, there, there's an open question there. And I think that, and even if he does testify, I think he'll, he'll I mean, Mueller has laid the playbook, which is, I'll testify and I'll give you exactly what I've given you before. I'll refer to my report. And I suspect what McGahn would do is just uh, go up there with a copy of his prior testimony and refer people to it um, if he had to. So, I, so, so conceivably, whatever he told Mueller, there's a record of yeah. in all those hours that he sat there, and, and he just says, look at page, whatever. Right, going. and Congress might be able to get that. Um, but I think in terms of his live testimony, unless he had a change of heart and wanted mm -hmm. to harm the president, I don't see, you know, what he's done already. I mean, it's out there. I don't see it being a game changer. And so far, McGahn has held fast in terms of not being willing to. Well, he's following the direction of the White House. Right. I mean, it, uh, which is a private citizen, he doesn't have to do. Right. Yeah. Well, well, and but he, he as a lawyer, um, he does not want to. Uh, you know, his client has asserted a privilege, and he'll let the courts decide whether or not that privilege is valid. But he's not going to go rogue and go against the wishes of his client. All right, Bob Driscoll, an analysis as always. We'll watch on Monday, although I bet fewer people will be watching John Dean this time than, yeah. than back during the Watergate. I, I, I don't see the average millennial taking off work on Monday to go see John Dean uh, testify before the House Judiciary Committee. All right, thank you, sir. We appreciate it. Thank you, Leland. <laughs>